All right, guys, so what we got going on today is, of course, sponsored by Carlock, but we're taking things to another level. Disregard all the biscuit crumbs and, and Doritos crumbs that I got in my seat. That's none of your business. But today, we are hardwiring Carlock into the car because a lot of you guys always have complaints that what if somebody jumps in your car and just can disconnects it because all it is is connected to the OBD. It's literally right there. And there have been times where I got in the car and accidentally uh, kicked it out because I was trying to get to the emergency brake that has happened and then of course times where i take it to dodge and i'm getting it serviced and they have to remove it because obviously they got to plug their sensors and all their equipment into the obd so a lot of people have been asking me what happens if they do all that so in this case we're going to hardwire it to the car so we're going to hardwire it to the battery and this right here is an obd sensor replacement so in other words you will always have an obd sensor open or available but um yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, we're working it out, how it's going to work. I don't know how it works exactly, but here it is, Carlock OBD power cable. Um, that doesn't have anything on there. This is, one of these is a splitter that we may not need or something like that. But, yeah, so I think this is it, like the splitter, we may, we may not need that. But we are going to be hardwiring it to the car itself. That way, no criminal can just break in and... Um, just disconnect it like that because if they disconnect it, one thing I didn't realize that I didn't or I failed to talk about was that if they disconnect it, you lose your GPS capabilities. You know, you won't be able to tell where it is um, up until the point that they disconnect it. That'd be as far as you'll be able to tell. But once they disconnect it and they take your car um, and toss it out the window, you're pretty much, you know, shit out of luck, unfortunately. So if you hardwire it, there is no disconnecting and wherever your car goes, car lock goes with you, right? So we got the extraordinaire Rubik's. He's installing. Look at that. See, his is clean. Mine is not. Got my man Taz in there. He's getting a kill switch. So between kill switches and car lock getting hardwired, we're going to have a full day here. Three lane hogs up here in the, you know, we're doing it how we're doing it. So we'll see how this works and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys. So me and my man Rubik's here. So we hardwired it to the battery in the trunk and we plugged in the, uh, cause basically what you would do is you would just take the car lock out of the OBD like so, and you would plug it into the extension thing back here and you would just leave it back there. So basically instead of, uh, it says device connected, but uh, instead of having your car lock plugged into the OBD, it would be plugged into the, uh, what is it called? Extension or splitter or something like that? Yeah, the, um, yeah, the extension, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the OBD extension back here and you would just run it off the battery. But I gotta be honest, one thing that I'm noticing is that I almost feel like the notifications are a little bit delayed. Like, uh, I did engine start three times, and forgive me, I'm filming on my iPhone. I don't have my real phone with me, my real camera with me. But I did engine remote start three times, and I got no notification. And then I did a vibration start, or a vibration check, and I didn't get any kind of vibration notifications at all. And I was able to take it down the street to the stop, and the only notification I got was that the vehicle had moved. So I'm thinking that if you hardwire it and have it in the trunk of your car, you're losing some of the sensitivity. What you think? Do you agree? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Now, on my car, now it's a little bit different with my car. Yeah, I, got, yeah. I got the interior motion sensor. So, gotcha. so when we go into the interior, then it's going to go off from that standpoint. Yeah. But it seems like it's a, a little bit, yeah, definitely a little bit less sensitive if you go through the through the hardwire. Go the hardwire. But I mean, it's, it's going to be pros and cons. I mean, if you do it through that way, yeah. you'll still be able to track the car. Yeah. Um, it's hidden. Yeah. And if someone goes in the car, they can't just find it off gate. That's a good point. But, um, I mean, there's pros and cons to, to either way you do it. Yeah. Yeah. So the pros would be if you did it with OBD, I think it's a little more sensitive. But like like Rubik's just said, people can find it and unplug it and, you know, you're screwed. But if you go the hardwire route, there's a chance that you may lose your engine start and lose your... Uh, your um vibration because technically it shouldn't read the engine start period coming from the battery because it's just plugged into the battery it's well, not I, even I think plugged should, into the yeah. obd right well i'm thinking what it should read it is like but based on the voltage chain. the voltage chain yeah yeah because it's going to get a baseline of your voltage as it plugged in and then yeah. if it all of a sudden spikes up to maybe like i think when it's running 14.9 like or something like that something like that yeah. somewhere around there then it's going to notice that the engine's probably cut on or yeah that's a good point now that i'm thinking about it it's not it shouldn't even read your engine um, start 
just because it's not even technically it's not directly plugged into the car it's just kind of plugged into the battery yeah to the power yeah it's just plugged into the power so it'll let you know that your damn car is powered and if you're in the trunk messing around because it did go off vibration detection did go off when uh rubik's picked it up and was moving it around uh in the trunk but as far as vibration detection engine start and just being hella sensitive when you um hardwire to the battery you're losing some of those features but like you said you'll always be able to see where it is all the time because you do have a gps and uh, it will give you vehicle move notifications uh just because you know the location is changing on the gps but uh you're losing some of the other stuff so some people are okay with that some people are not the pro of it is that it's hidden away nobody can unplug it you always got a 24 7 gps and it's hidden away. Nobody can unplug it. You know, nobody knows where it is. The con of it is that you lose the engine start, the vibration notification, all that stuff. And um, so you kind of weigh it out yourself. But this is how you would install it if you went through the trunk and went through the battery. So, you know, that's also, been about it. Yeah. Also, to keep in mind, like there's multiple ways you can grab power for it. Yeah. Um, that's just one way to do it. True. Um, that doesn't mean that it's always done that way. Don't mm -hmm. want to say that. Um, but it's just this one way you can do it. You can pull power from front fuses yeah. interior places all that type of stuff yeah and whatnot so yeah that's a good point you got a couple different routes that you can pull power from but um i think the most effective as far as using all the features may be the obd yeah ODB. what you think yeah odb yeah 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 that's the most effective to use all the features but if you just want something that's going to give you a 24 7 gps and maybe a vehicle move because it's moving from one location to another you can power it anywhere, but you know, just take that as you see it guys. Let me know how you feel about it, but this has been the install video. I'll see you guys in the next one. You see Rubik's pulling up. That's his wife right there. You know what I mean? He stole my car. Stole your car. I tried right. it <laughs> I know, but hey. <laughs> this video is sponsored by CarLock. CarLock is a car security device that I stand by and recommend for some extra security and peace of mind if you own a Dodge Charger or Dodge Challenger. Check them out by clicking the link below in the description. Use code KNOCKOUT360 for an additional 10% off your Amazon purchase. And also use code KNOCKOUT360 for 14 extra free day trial. Let's get into the video. All right, so what we're about to do is he's got his hardwired in his car and it's in, well, it's wherever it is, I can't tell you, but what we do want to test is whether or not you're going to get engine start or vibration or any of that stuff. Cause, uh, I don't think that comes with being hardwired because when you plug it into the OBD, it's reading your, your, you know, engine's computer, your car's computer. So it's reading the engine. It's reading all the mechanics and electronics of the car, your battery, your battery percentage, voltage, all that stuff. And not to mention when you got your car lock plugged into the OBD, if someone's trying to break in, they're more than likely to break in through the passenger or through the, the driver. So, you know, you're close to the OBD in and of itself. So you should begin the notification. You go ahead and start it up, bro. Oh, that sound good. Hold on, let me. sensitive yeah that's what i'm thinking yeah so hardwired you may lose engine start and vibration detection but you will get vehicle moved and you will get gps 24 7 but you lose some of the other features so we tried it on mine we tried it on his his is brand new 22 mine's a 20 so i mean it's regardless of the year so uh that's it guys you can go to hardwired route and lose some features or you can go to obd route and you know get everything so it's up to you but uh let me know what you think in the comments see you in the next one peace check out my man rubik as well yes sir yeah so guys so i did want to kind of clear up that video because i was doing so much moving around and i was filming with my filming with my phone i forgot my my camera so i really couldn't film everything that i wanted to but long story short what we were trying to do is hardwire car lock so a lot of you guys know that car lock the primary i guess um 
way of powering the device is to plug it into your OBD sensor. A lot of you guys are cool with that. Some of you guys are not. A lot of you guys are not cool with that for a couple reasons. Number one, if somebody breaks into your car and they see that you got it plugged in, all they got to do is kick it out, right? And once they kick it out, you'll get vibration detection and you'll get device disconnected. But once the device has been disconnected, you lose your GPS at that point. I mean, the device is no longer working. It's just one of them things like you have got to come outside or come to your car or come to the aid of your car once you get those notifications. If you don't, however, your car is pretty much gone and you have no way of tracking it. And a lot of you guys don't like that it's in the OBD because you accidentally kick it out like I used to. I don't do it anymore, but I use my parking brake a lot and it's right beside your parking brake. Like if you get too much foot on your parking brake, there's a chance that you could actually kick out car lock. And a lot of you guys don't like it because of that. And then some of you other guys actually have other stuff that's plugged into your OBD. So you don't want to, you know, uh, um, fill up that port. You want it to be open for other stuff. So we powered it from the battery in the back. And the purpose of that was for one, it's concealed because it's in the trunk. So you wouldn't even, and if somebody were to break into your car, they wouldn't even know that you've got something that's actually plugged into the trunk because the car lock device would be, uh, uh, spliced to the battery, to the actual battery in the car. And on top of that, it would be hidden under the, uh, the floor liner in the trunk. So you wouldn't see it. You would not know it was there, which is good because for one, um, it frees up your OBD and two, it's concealed. Nobody knows that it's there. And, um, Three, it's just one of them things where it can never be disconnected. No one is going to steal your car. And first thing they do is go to your trunk, lift up the, the liner, unplug it from the battery. Nobody's going to do all that. You know what I'm saying? So you got a lot of things on your side as far as that is concerned. However, one thing that we did notice during the testing in that video, and uh, like I said, I was moving so much going from point to point, I may not have explained it as I should, but it seemed that, and even Rubik said in the video, shout out to my man Rubik's, go like, subscribe, comment on his channel, but it seemed that um, it wasn't nearly as sensitive when it came to vibration detection, right? And uh, and that has a lot to do with the fact that, I mean, let's be honest here, a lot of the vibration that's going to take place in your car is going to take place in the front, like the front seat, the passenger seat, or at least the main cabin. If you got your car lock in the trunk and it's plugged into the battery and it's under the liner and tucked away good and the trunk is closed and obviously the seats are, you know, uh, locked back how they're supposed to be, there's a chance that the sensor just may not pick up the vibration. So somebody could legitimately be breaking into your car, breaking the windows, hopping in, hanging out of it. And car lock just doesn't pick it up because it's under so much of the car. It's under the liner. It's behind the seats. It's in the trunk. The trunk is closed. It may not even realize it, let alone send out a signal. So the sensitivity is severely affected. Um, and another thing that we noticed that just because it's plugged into the power of the uh, the battery and not the OBD, some features are either completely deactivated. Shut out the car lock. It's literally locking as we speak. It's either completely deactivated or once again, it's it's you know, it's just not as sensitive as it should be. And one thing that we had trouble getting to work was the engine start notification and the vibration detection notification because the engine start. Uh, based on based on what Rubik's was explaining, he was expecting the device to work and display an engine start because of the voltage. Right. I mean, you go from zero volts to however much our cars run on. Right. And he was expecting the device to pick that up and automatically uh, send the notification that the engine was started. Well, it, I guess it doesn't work that way. I could be wrong, but it seems that it doesn't work that way. Now, my installation or our installation could be incorrect but we were not getting engine start. We were not getting vibration detection. We were getting vehicle moved, right? Now, if you know how vehicle move works, that's just based on GPS. And there's a certain circle that's around your car at all times whenever you have a car lock parked or have car lock plugged into your car. And if your car exits that circle, according to the GPS, you're going to get a notification. So best case scenario, you've got it plugged into the trunk. You may not get vibration detection. You may not get engine start, but you will get a vehicle move notification simply because after your car has been stolen, it's going to be moved out of that little GPS circle or radius that a uh, car lock puts it on. 
Um, and I know that's not enough for a lot of you guys. Like that's certainly not enough for me. I thought that I was going to be sneaky and have my stuff installed in the trunk, but as you can see, I didn't necessarily like how that, that works. I mean, to me, concealability is fine, but I would rather have my notifications because if somebody breaks into your car, you're getting vibration first. Um, you're getting uh, uh, device disconnected if they kick it out. You should be getting those two notifications first. And then at that point, you should know something's going on. Get to your damn car ASAP. Um, so, yeah, that was the kind of the, the gist of that video. We thought that by, by powering it, hardwiring it to the battery that we were going to be able to free up the OBD and we were going to be able to, to conceal the device completely. Well, we did free up the OBD. We did conceal it, but we lost a lot of the features of car lock. So comment in the description. Let me know how you guys have it plugged up. I'm imagining 95 to 99 percent of you have it just plugged into the OBD because that's the easiest way. But for you guys that may have it hardwired for the very few of you, let me know how you have that working. I mean, I know there's multiple ways of hardwiring stuff to our cars because, um, you know, there's just multiple ways. Um, and uh, let me know how that's working for you. As always, if any boy knockout, see you in the next one. Peace.